from your mentoring make a difference nearby students can contact us for group and individual mentoring sessions our location is mentioned in video description others can contact us for online classes online doubt clearing sessions and for other online videos which are not publicly available on youtube thank you one till now we have completed exercise 1.1 so what we will be studying today is the properties of addition subtraction of integers okay so under this we will be studying first property will be closure property okay we will be studying this for addition subtraction for multiplication and for division what do you understand by the closure property uh, you must have a brief idea about this because we have studied this property in class 6 also okay so i can say if we add two integers and my output or my result is an integer then i can say that it is closed under addition okay let's take an example 3 is an integer minus 2 is an integer I add both of these and I get 1 1 is also an integer so this is closed under addition that means you cannot put any example in which we add two integers and you get something else means every time you add two integers you will be getting an integer only so I can write it is closed under addition okay similarly if I subtract an integer from an integer then definitely I'm going to get an integer only and if this is the case then I can say it is closed under subtraction For example, uh, suppose 7 is an integer, minus 4 is an integer, I subtract, then I get 7 plus 4, which is 11, which is an integer, okay. If you can make any example in which subtraction of two integer is not an integer, then this will, then we can say this is not closed under subtraction, but unfortunately, we don't have any such example, okay. So, let us jump to multiplication. Similarly, for the multiplication, same rule applies. If we multiply an integer with an integer and we get an integer always, okay, always, then we can say that it is closed under multiplication. Uh, if divide is in different case, let's see. Suppose I divide three divided by two. Okay, what I get? One point five, or you can say three by two. Three by two is not an integer. One point five is not an integer. Okay, so I can say this is not not closed. under division okay so we have studied the closure property uh, of an integer for all the operations although in your ncrt it is mentioned for addition and subtraction only but i have told you for multiplication division also okay uh, next we will be uh, studying uh, commutative property okay uh, this also you can recall from your previous classes okay next our property is commutative property So let's create another layer. Layer one, let's hide. Okay. What is commutative property? Okay, let's understand it. Suppose an integer a operation 
integer b is equal to b operation integer a. What do you what I mean by this operation? This operation can be anything, anything from the below 4 minus plus into divide again plus minus into divide. So, what I want to say if a plus b is equal to b plus a, then I can say the integers are commutative under addition or integers are commutative for addition. Okay, If a minus b equal to b minus a, if this is the case, then I can say the uh, integers are commutative for subtraction, but this is not true. Okay, A multiplied by b is equal to b multiplied by a. If this is the case, then I can say yes, integers are commutative for multiplication. If a divided by b equals to b divided by a, if this is true, then I can say that integers are commutative for division, but this this is also false. Okay. Uh, for example, 3 minus 2 is not equal to 2 minus 3. Uh, in this case, 4 divided by 2 is not equal to 2 divided by 4. But for addition and multiplication, uh, any example we take, we can change the orders. Okay. So, we move to our layer 1 and we update that. For addition, yes, commutative. I write yes. Okay. Uh, let me change the color. Uh, yes. Uh, no. Yes. No. Okay. So we have studied the commutative property of the integers. Now next comes the associative property. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me also mark the formula or how we can judge okay uh, what does associative property means okay a operation b operation c equals to okay we know the board mass bracket open so, in LHS, we are going to solve this first. In RHS, we are going to solve this first. Okay. So, this operation, this operation can be anything plus, minus, multiply, divide. Okay. So, if it is plus, then I have to say A plus B plus C will be equal to A plus B plus C. Okay. So, it is true for addition. So, we can say that integers are associative for additions that means we can add in any order where suppose there are three integers that we have to add we get we have we can add first two or we can add last two suppose we have five we can add in any order that does not make any change in our answer okay uh, next comes the subtraction that means a minus b minus c equal to a minus b minus c this is this will not be the case so let's take an example 3 minus 2 minus 4 equals to 3 minus 2 minus 4 if we solve this lhs and if we solve this rhs we know this will not be equal you can try it yourself and see whether it is equal or not okay so i can say that integers are not uh, associative in case of subtraction okay Next is the multiplication and A multiplied by B multiplied by C equals to A multiplied by B multiplied by C. Okay. Suppose I multiply for these two first in LHS and in RHS I multiply these two first. Okay. And then the result is multiplied by C in the LHS and in case of RHS the result is multiplied by A. In the both the cases LHS will be equal to RHS. Okay. So I can say that integers are associative in case of multiplication and the last one is division c equals to a divided by, by c. Uh, this will be false you can take any example then any random example which you like and you can test it yourself that you can 
you can clear you will be clearly able to see that the LHS will not be equal to RHS you can try this and solve this and you will get to know that this is not equal okay so associative property is again true for addition and multiplication so we jump to our layer one and update it okay yes no yes no okay so I write the formula for you over here on the top a operation okay I, I need to mention operation over here B operation C equals to A operation B operation C so this operation can be anything plus minus multiply divide okay so we have till now studied closure property commutative property and associative property okay hope these things are clear to you now next what we do we jump to the next topic which is which is additive identity what do you mean by additive identity okay uh, the easiest way which I think to remember this is additive identity is a number which when added to a number does not change its identity Matlab, ek number mein kuch mein aisa add karun, uski identity ya, uski value change na ho. So, har koi sol sakta isko ki, ek number mein mein kya add karun, ki uski value na change ho. It's but obvious. Zero will be the answer. Zero kisi mein bhi add kijiye aap. Uski koi value nahi change hogi. So let's check. Suppose a plus zero is a. Ya fir zero plus a equal to a. So agar suppose kijiye minus eight plus zero. Again it will be minus eight. Ya fir zero plus minus eight. Again it will be minus eight. See. So, 0 is the only number or we can say 0 is the additive identity for integers, okay. So, if you add 0 in any number, you are not going to change the identity, okay. Okay, now let's jump to NCRT. People usually ignore try this, but I would suggest to do all these because there are some very good questions in this, okay. So, let's pick the try this. Write a pair of integer whose sum gives a negative integer okay add a pair of integer whose sum gives you a negative integer whose sum okay pair of integers i have to pick okay suppose i do minus 2 and minus 1 suppose i add these two okay so what i will be getting minus 3 okay so a negative integer okay. so i have added a pair of integer and i get a negative integer okay this is a part b part is i should get a zero so i can say minus two and two i can get zero so if i add two numbers one with inverse then i will always be getting the zero so whenever you want to get a zero you add the additive inverse of that number in that okay c part an integer smaller than both the integers so i have to add two integers and my output should be smaller than both of these okay uh, again uh, minus 4 plus minus 5 i add minus 4 and minus 5 so i get minus 9 my minus 9 is smaller than minus 4 it is also smaller than minus 5 okay my d part an integer smaller than only one of the integers okay suppose 9 plus minus 5 what I get 4 see my 4 is smaller than 9 but greater than minus 4 so I can say an integer smaller than only one of the integers okay e an integer greater than both the integers okay just to add positive numbers 9 plus 7 we get 16 my 16 is greater than both the integers 16 is also greater than 9 and also greater than 7 okay makes sense we jump to second question of try this okay write a pair of integer whose difference gives a, a negative integer okay so i have to write two integers whose difference gives me a negative integer 
okay so let's suppose minus 9 and 4 okay my one integer is minus 9 my another integer is 4 what I get I get minus 5 so I get a negative integer when I subtract 4 from minus 9 okay my a part is this I should get a 0 okay in second case to get 0 by subtracting this is the case where we have to subtract the same number from the same number otherwise there is no other case by which we can get a 0 so suppose let's suppose 7 minus 7 this will be 0 okay uh, c part an integer smaller than both the integers I subtract from 4 3 I get 1 1 is smaller than 4 1 is smaller than 3 okay depart an integer greater than only one of the integer okay suppose I subtract 1 from 4 I get 3 I 4 is one, one integer 1 is another integer I get 3 3 is smaller than 4 but greater than 1 okay so an integer greater than only one of the integer okay depart an integer greater than both the integers okay minus 4 minus minus 3 what I get minus 4 plus 3 which is minus 1 so minus 1 is greater than minus 4 and it is also greater than minus 3 okay so we have done I'll try this uh, before jumping to exercise you can solve the example okay the solution is there so let's we will jump to the exercise directly okay write down a pair of integer holes sum is minus 7 okay first case uh, whose sum is minus 7 uh, we have to write down the pair of integers means whose sum suppose minus 3 plus minus 4 what we get minus 7 there can be a number of examples minus 2 plus minus 5 again minus 7 okay uh, b part difference is minus 10 okay uh, difference is minus minus 10 okay 15 minus 25 what we get minus 10 uh, there can be an, uh, other examples also again minus 10 okay c part sum is 0 again we have we can pick any number 6 and then we have to add additive inverse of it in it and we will be getting 0 easy okay let's jump to the question number 2 write a pair of integers write a pair of negative integers whose difference gives 8 okay a uh, pair of negative integers that means both the integers should be negative and whose difference should be 8 okay uh, let's take an example uh, minus 2 and uh, minus 10 are uh, my two integers now what difference means I subtract I subtract so I put a bracket so minus 2 plus 10 gives me 8 okay this is a part b part write a negative integer and a positive integer whose sum is 5 one integer should be negative and other should be positive and whose sum should be minus 5 okay suppose uh, my positive is 10 my negative is minus 15 okay now I add these two okay so I get 10 minus 15 so I get minus 5 okay C part you can write uh, another answer also with it does not it is not necessary that your answer and my answer should match in these cases there can be n number of answers in these cases okay write a negative integer and a positive integer whose difference is minus 3 okay now I need difference as minus 3 so one should be negative and other should be positive okay okay let's take one is minus 2 another is 1 okay now we do the difference 
So, minus 2, minus 1, what I get? Minus 3. So, this is your answer. Okay. Now, let us jump to question number 3. In a quiz, team A scored this minus 40, 10, 0, and team B scored 10, 0, and minus 40 in the consecutive, in, the, in three successive rounds. Which team scored more? Can you say that we can add integers in any order? Okay. So, let us take team A here. Let us take team B here. Okay. So, team A scored minus 40, then score 10. Then score 0. Team B score 10, then 0, then minus 40. Okay. Uh, we have to get the total, we have to add all the numbers. So we put plus sign. Here we put bracket. Okay. See, uh, the three numbers are same. So by the associative property, we have already learned that we can add in any order. It does not matter. So the answer to the question can we say that we can add integers in any order? Yes. With the help of associative property, we can say that we can add them in any order and our answers will be same. So, in this case, we add, we get minus 30 here and minus 30 here. Okay. So, both the teams score equal marks. Fill in the blanks to make the following statement true. Okay. Let's start. First, minus 5 plus minus 8 equals to minus 8 plus blank okay so if i solve lhs minus 5 minus 8 i will be getting minus 13 okay so here what should i write or i can say by the help of commutative property i can say minus 8 minus 5 I can add in any order or I can change the order that in case of addition by commutative property. Okay, second part minus 53 equals to minus 53. Okay, plus I have to fill this blank space. Okay, so something should be placed over here so that the after adding that I get minus 53 only. So this we have studied additive identity. So, 0 will be the answer here. Okay. Third question. 17 plus blank space equal to 0. Okay. I have to fill this space with a number so that I get a 0 after the addition. So, in the addition, we have already learned that to get the 0, we have to add the additive inverse of this number. So, additive inverse of this is minus 17 okay okay clearly we can see this is an example of associative property in case of addition so without wasting any time i can directly write minus 7 here okay and the last question the fifth one blank space Clearly, I can see this is also an example of associative property. Here we add these two. And in this case, we have added these two. So, here our answer will be minus 3 in the bracket. Okay. So, our exercise 1.2 is also complete. Thank you.